Jennifer needs volunteers to help with this, so if you can help, she'd appreciate it. Roger? One of the things that the um, people that are involved in Solid Rock Cafe are going to be doing um, every fifth month, we're going to be making mana bags. And I know most of you know what a mana bag is. I'll try and define it for you here in a second. But I wanted to remind you also that every second Saturday now, every second Saturday of the month at 6 o'clock, that's when Solid Rock Cafe is. And if you are a junior high person or a senior high person, or if you think yourself to be of the mindset of a junior high person or a high school person, or if you're an older person that wants to help, and I need people to help, um, please come on those nights. Last night was our first, like our dress rehearsal before we actually begin next month. And I was just really, really pleased with the spirit that we had there. And it, you know, it, it's taken about six months. I've been talking to you all about this. It's taken about six months to re-establish um, all of the equipment and everything and getting it all together. And now we're ready to roll. Well, mana bags. This is what a mana bag looks like. Mana bags cost $5. I put in the bulletin the contents of a typical mana bag. And that's what we're aiming for for, the, for each of the bags that we make. If you would like to purchase a mana bag and keep it in your car so that when you run across a person in need, rather than fumbling through your wallet trying to find a $5 bill to help somebody that is in need, if you see somebody that's out on the street that is hungry, you can just say, are you hungry? And if they are, you say, well, I have something that I'd like to give you. And you just quickly in your mind say a prayer, say bless you, I hope that you have a, a good day here. And you hand it to them, and then they have food for the next you know, couple meals, perhaps. If you would like to buy one, they are $5. Nobody's making money off of this, of course. But on the envelope, on the local side, if you want to write the word manna and put five in there and put it in the envelope and put it in the plate, that's great. I'm not taking money. Don't want to take money. It'll all go through the same system anyway. Um, the bags will always be in the back in the foyer on the table. Pick up a bag if you buy one. If you don't buy one, don't pick one up. They're $5 put in the plate, and they're not for you. People at Solid Rock last night were like, well, can I have some raisins? I was like, no, they're for the bag. Okay, so they're right here. If you have any other questions about it, great. Also, as of yesterday, how many numbers do we have for the pantry? 60. And so next Saturday, we're meeting again from 9 to 12. If you know somebody in need, Ann and I will be here from 9 to 12 looking for um, our 125. Once we get to 125, then we're good to go. All right, I'm going to put this on the back table so you can see it. And refresh me, uh, are you going to be mailing again to those 60 people a flyer in that? Because that seems to help. What we do, the ones that we have signed up already, we mail them flyers and uh, uh, with the idea and with the new date and that seems to work good for us that they their word of mouth all right Ann, you can hit it
Good morning, and welcome to each of you. I missed you last week. I was just gone one Sunday, but I feel like I've been gone a while, and I'm glad to be home. I'm glad to be back with you. We are so blessed. Jesus does shine on us all the time. Why, this morning, he sent his sunshine already to shine on us, and then he sent the rain to bless us, and the sun shining again. He blesses us constantly, and we do praise him. This is his house, and we have come to worship him this day, and to show and express our love for him and for each other by our presence. I want to, to our call to worship this morning is it's adapted from Psalms 48. We ponder your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your name, O God, like your praise, reaches to the end of the earth. We come to this place to worship God together, to form community, to raise our voices in praise. Alleluia. Let us pray. God, our Father, we invite you to join us for worship today. We seek your Holy Spirit in this hour to lead and guide us through this service. Be with our speaker, bless her, and your words that she has prepared for us. May we respond to your spirit with joy and love and peace and anticipation for what we're about to hear. We thank thee for each one here today. Bless those that are not here but are yearning for your spirit. Reign over our service and give us a renewed charge of enthusiasm that lifts and empowers our spirit, Lord. But Lord, I also pray for the peace of the world. There is so much wrong within this world of ours. And we know, Father, that it can only get better by coming to Thee. The powers that be, Father, seem to have forgotten what it was like years ago when this country of ours was first started that you were foremost in their minds and your word was always anticipated in everything they did and in the laws that they made. But Father, as we reach out to those countries around the world, as we try to make peace, that we ask that your hand might go before us 
that it might bring peace to them when we offer a willing hand, but a peace that would bring peace to their country, peace to their people, the joy of knowing that they're not in war or will be in war, for there is much, too much saber rattling going on today. And we pray that, Father, that you might come before them and help prevent some of this likeliness things to, that might happen. And we pray, Father, especially for the peace of Israel and the peace throughout America for this day in your name. Amen.
One day, an elephant saw a hummingbird lying flat on its back on the ground. The bird's tiny feet were raised up into the air. What on earth are you doing, hummingbird, asked the elephant. The, humming the hummingbird replied, I have heard that the sky might fall today, and if that should happen, I am ready and willing to do my part to hold it up. The elephant laughed and mocked the tiny bird. Do you think those little tiny feet could hold up the sky? Not alone, admitted the hummingbird, but each must do what he can, and this is what I can do. Would the ushers come forward, please? Shall we pray? Dear Lord, bless this offering that is given. May it be used wisely in the building of thy kingdom. Bless our congregation and those gathered that we may work together and live in love and harmony for one another. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. We have sung praises to our God this day. We have shared the physical monies that we have. Now let us come together in unison as it's printed in your program. Let us pray our prayer of confession together. Holy Spirit, breath of God, you would bring us wisdom, giving us vision and understanding that we might learn to live joyously in your care but we shield our eyes and resist understanding, despising your gifts with our greed and impatience. It is true that our ways are not your ways, but we don't just get it. We want to feed the hungry, but would rather you give us bread, not the yeast and flour. We want to shelter the needy, but we should give more the mustard seed to do the job. You call us into relationships that will grow and nurture and minister to each other. Forgive us when we focus on the end and miss your precious one. Amen. I think the less you know of about the subject, you bring more stuff with you. <clears throat> and I am going to have to rely on my notes this morning. 
because what I've, I've tried to do, and I'm, I'll try to do right now, is take, um, read a couple of sentences, and re then read a scripture. I wish that I had uh, thought of this in time enough that I could have asked you to bring your Bibles today, but I didn't, so um, we'll live with it. I'm hunting some words that Roger gave me of the hymn. The theme today is proclaim the gospel, proclaim the good news, rather. And you know that little song, did you hear the good news? Did you hear the good news? That God's not dead anymore? I want to read some down through the, the uh, hymn and some of the key words. Did you hear that he's living again? Did you hear he's back fishing for men? If you haven't heard, I'm spreading the word that he's living again. Did you hear that he's walking around? If you've heard this, I'm spreading the word that he's living again. There he was along the shore, watching those fishing Galileans, and they heard his voice holler out, follow me. So follow me, brother, follow me, sinner, follow me, friend and foe, follow me. We've got places to go. And I want you to think about that. And if I realized Roger had been here, was going to be here today, you'd been singing it, Roger. Um, I was thinking about the good news. And there is a certain cookie that I have found. It's in a little package. I really was looking for something for Louise, if you want to know the truth. And I haven't gotten it to her yet. It's a, uh, like a little breakfast nourishment. It's got four little beautiful little cookies in there. And that, if you're in a tide or you want just something small, to, you know, to tide you over, it's good. And of course it tastes good. It's got enough grams of sugar in it. Uh, I've been given, I have been in the process, it's going to rain us in, huh? I've been in the process of making sure that the people I know who I think they need it, I'm telling them and I'm showing them this cookie. Am I not loud enough, Sonny? <laughs> I'm giving them this cookie as if it was the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm giving this cookie because I believe in it. So if you believe in something and you get excited about something, of course, a lot of people don't get excited about food. I do that. If you believe it, you go tell it. Or you live it or you show it. You're not embarrassed. You don't care. This is who you are at that time. If you have found something uh, that is good for you. I want to tell you um, another little short story. I'm going to use one of Sonny's uh, uh, invitations or experience. He planted some peas in the garden, and they're long peas. They're, what are they called, Sonny? Well, he can't hear me to tell me. Um, these peas are running peas. He thought maybe that it was just a bush, you know, and uh, he planted one in one row in with the corn. Well, the corn didn't get too high, so it couldn't go very far on the corn. And he went and put metal post in there and tied a rope to here and to here, you know, as you go down the road. He wrapped the little tendrils around that uh, rope. He come back, came back the next day. They had unwrapped. They were not there several times. He, they just won't stay on that rope. They don't want it. They, they go around that uh, post. They go around each other, but they're not going to hit put themselves on that post. So somewhere in that DNA of that pea, it has to have something that's stable. And that's what we have to do, is to have something that's stable in our lives. The rod of iron in the Book of Mormon and the rod of iron in the, uh, the New Gospel. It is something that is necessary, absolutely necessary to our lives. 
From all the business of life, we come to worship because we need to be reminded of who we are and who we are to become. We are children of God. Now remember that, we are children of God. A God who loves us and touches our lives to make truth and beauty of our sins, to turn us around the coming of the kingdom, where love is, for we are created in the image of God. God is love, so the image is love. I want to read to you from the book of, um, of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man from Galilee whose name was John, John the Baptist. He came to witness and bring forth the Christ. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen the glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through, Moses, through Jesus Christ. So we know who Christ is. And you know, you have to decide in the beginning. Now, is Christ a carpenter? Or is Christ really the Messiah, the Savior for all of us. I know that uh, we all believe that Jesus is the Christ and that you, you, um, you hold on to that when life gives you a little, some things that are pretty hard to, to stomach. I want to read you a, another scripture out of um, John 15, 4 through 11. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. It's a big order in it. Love everything, love all people. Even that woman that David might be saying that says turn the air conditioner up and another one says turn it down, but we still find the joy in the people and the deacon especially, I think. You know, trying to please all of us and we just keep coming up and telling them everything, that must be pretty hard and disappointing <laughs> sometimes for the, uh, you're getting everything ready for the, uh, <laughs> the uh, coming people. It, it's hard when you have to deal with people like that. God's love will permeate, penetrate anything you can think of. There's no place too dark for love's light. No place of filth without a spot where love can come in and clean. We will never have a challenge that Christ can't feel. We will never have an earthly desire that he can't exceed. When we allow Christ to be all he is to us, we find wholeness. One piece at a time, every time you discover the reality of Christ fulfilling another realm of your needs and longings, 
His name is written on a different part of you, and you are that much closer to wholeness. After a while, if we can uh, run the good fight and, and uh, endeavor to live through everything that has happened to you, uh, you will gradually become a whole person. We can't just up and uh, let sin, you know, uh, just throw it all away. Because you've got to learn and you've got to experience it as you go along. And then certain things are, are relieved from your mind and everything, uh, and then certain things that are good will fill it up. Because you remember the scripture, it said that uh, if the good left, they, they cleaned out, let's say the brain of the one where the good uh, was not uh, necessary anymore in that person's life. So if they would withdraw from Christianity, what they do is to fill it up, they being sin, fill it up, that place, with uh, evil things. That's about the best way I can explain it. If you're completely clean and you don't invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, it will fill up with evil and more evil than it has or that you had to begin with. Jesus knows all about you. It's like stepping on the weighing scales and I don't want Sonny to see him. Uh, you try to, uh, I, I could keep that from him. He just has to guess. But not with Jesus, not with the Holy Spirit. Jesus knows all about you. He knows all the needs of your heart. And he knows how to answer those needs. Nothing is too difficult for the creator and the sustainer of life. If we could remember that in everyday dealings with people, Jesus knows all about you. He knows all the needs of your heart, and he knows how to answer those needs. Remember, I read this twice for you. Nothing is too difficult for the creator and the sustainer of life. I want to read from the book of Peter, 1 Peter, um, I had to mark all these uh, pages down because I don't know the Bible that good. <laughs> Praise be to the God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Kept in heaven for you, who though faith, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in you, and ready to be revealed for the last time. That was uh, First Peter. I want to read another verse. I knew I was looking for something else here. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in that in him are all filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you're not receiving the gold of your faith, the salvation of your souls. For now you are receiving the gold of your faith and the salvation of your uh, soul. The last time that I um, stood before you, I was scared out of my wits. It was if I had never been before anybody in my life. Now, part of the reason I get scared out of my wits is uh, dementia has come to my mind. And I, so they say the beginning stages. And all my tests, the only thing they told me was what it wasn't. Uh, it's not a stroke, which I would convince myself I knew I'd had those things. 
and it was, it's not Alzheimer's at this point. So I'm left with dementia, and if I don't say it just right, you'll have to forgive me. Um, I sat here, and as that, um, it came closer to me to stand up, I said a quick prayer. I said, Lord, help me to be aware so that I can think. That's what I was worried about. Because you can get so scared, you just panic. and <laughs> It's all gone then. And I said, I wish I could stand up one time without being so scared as I am right now. And I want you to know that I came to here and stood up and it was if there was, we were all in a, a, bub, a bubble, like we're all just like we are right now. I just, it, it, there was a silence there that was beautiful. I had the ability to greet you in different things, in different ways that I really wanted to say. And then I had to stop because I had to go to the real work of the sermon. But God answered that prayer that quickly. How can I, even when I get in my hard times, how can I deny him? Because he answers prayers. Sometimes my prayers aren't answered that quick. But it was an immediate blessing, a place where I wanted to be with you. And for that, I give God the glory. <clears throat> Perhaps in our living, the most difficult lesson of all to learn that is that if we love God, we must also love each other. And indeed, it would be a good and joyful thing if all God's children could learn to dwell together in unity. I, I'm sure that that's what... Um, Sign's going to be that we can be in unity and we can be in a love that uh, we don't, well, we don't pull people down. We love them and we hold them into God's glory and the Holy Spirit. I want to read you again. Um, no, I don't want to read that. I'm going toward Luke. I think I am. Okay. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad fr tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from the briars. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. But out, for out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. You speak what's in your heart, too. Sometimes we... Um, hurt our brothers and sisters, sometimes intentionally. Maybe we fear something about them. Maybe our perception of truth has to change. And after all, we really know what is right. Or sometimes we hurt just by not thinking. Years ago when I was teaching Bible school, I, was, uh, I had uh, Ashley and Ian, the two that I remembered in that class, I had uh, Ian by the hand, and we were walking in the stage. I don't know what we were going to do. And I saw Ashley, and I said to her, Hello, Miss Pretty Blue Eyes. And they were pretty. And Ian looked at me. I have blue eyes, too. Now, you know how low I felt, don't you? Because children are just wonderful. Of course, um, I covered it up somehow or another. And if we had been an adult and that happened, maybe we would not say anything. 
we would just store it in our mind. Huh. I'm not as good as she is. They think they're better than I, which results in withdrawal from the group because the person who has been hurt thinks, I don't belong with them anymore. Now, you don't intend to do those things, but in our ministry and in our thoughts each day, we need to be aware of the things that we think about and try to um, do only good things. In reality, what we believe is measured by what we live, not by what we say. If your life were a gospel like John's, who would love and believe that it's very important to love? The Jesus that John describes in the same, is the same one who is meant to be ours, the pre-existent miracle, the beginning of the world, the only begotten Son of the Father. He, Jesus Christ, is the Father of all creation. Give him a chance with your life. Jesus Christ still performs miracles, for I have seen them and I have felt them. And I praise God for the times that he has um, come to my rescue. And I know you can say the same thing. If we had enough time, we could go all around and you would be able to say, oh, this happened to me. Sometimes we have to look way back to get it, but it's there. And if you know, if you have put something in your mind, God can bring it back to your memory. And if you hadn't put it there, he doesn't have anything to to bring back to you when you're discussing with people about the church and what we believe in uh, Christ and God. So we got to put it there, which means you have to study. Just pure and simple, you have to study. <clears throat> also, what I wanted to add to this section was the most profound miracle of God will always be those within the hearts and the souls of people. Moving a mountain is nothing compared to changing a selfish, destructive human heart. To help people to see another way of life is not easy. Um, maybe it's not easy because when you're working with them, uh, people that you really want to help so much and they, they don't seem to want to grasp it, which that means that we have to have uh, patience on our part, don't we? Just so that we could go out and talk with them. <clears throat> Reading for Acts, from Acts. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them his command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. They asked him, uh, you, are you going to restore the kingdom? And he said, it's not for you to know. The times are dates. The Father has set for his own authority, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. I don't know if the scripture is in this or not, but it says that one time when uh, the disciples were in the room and there he appeared, that he breathed the Holy Spirit on them. I had never seen that. It, it just popped out and was significant to me as I read it this time. So they already had power and authority and they were ready. So when the time came and the hope of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit came to the people, 
they were ready and they magnified it and the Lord's Holy Spirit magnified them so God's just good in it I'm not going to keep you here all day so don't worry uh, love worketh no ill to his neighbor therefore love is the fulfilling of the law and that's from Romans Jesus did many miracles but these are written that you may believe these, these miracles that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that believing you will have life in his name you know there's a a holy spirit that gives us spiritual healing it is an activity of the Christian community of love for people do not have to be perfect where people can be themselves we don't have to be perfect we can be our own self where suffering is sometimes not so much taken away as shared by the group the healing force concentrated by the power of the risen Christ the healing presence presence generated by the prayers of the faithful is at the very heart of spiritual healing I want to read you one more scripture from scripture um, John As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. And if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. I am sure that there's good news in your life, good news that you can share. Um, good news that I can share too, that what we have to be is obedient to the Lord's commandments. And then out of the overflow of our heart, the blessings that you have received from the Holy Spirit is going to come forth. You can count on it. God bless us all.
Wherefore, my beloved people, pray to God with all the energy of heart that you may be filled with this love which he has bestowed upon all who are true followers of his Son, Jesus Christ. Moroni 7.52 May his spirit abide with each of us as we follow him. Amen.